Here, here. There's definitely something wrong when your local government drives better vehicles than your local populace. That's insane. Well, and why do they do it? Money. Because, yeah, they have lots of money because they steal it from us. And we gladly give it to them because we are, as we've heard on Mr. Floyd's show <laughs> several times from different people, that we are privileged to live here. In You've the heard borough. it from borough rep, from people who have borough been elect, uh, elected to yes. borough assembly that we are privileged to live in this borough. And that's why we pay the tax because of the privilege to live here. If you don't like it, you can leave. All right, Aaron. This thank is you. the exact opposite of what any of us here believe: is that we are not privileged to live here because of the borough. We are privileged to live here because of our neighbors. And if anything, the borough government is privileged to have us here. And the borough government is privileged that we allow them to exist. I, I know it's been quite a few years here, what, 230-some since we became our own country instead of being a subject of the crown. But if anybody anybody out there actually reads, may I suggest that a little history might do the trick here, that when you look at what we're dealing with today with our rulers taking our money to spend it on themselves to drive nicer things than we have, whether, and, you know, you look back in the day of the, no, the nobles who ruled the land, they would go out and they would tax the people. They would take from the people the very best stuff and use it for themselves. They would demand payment for the privilege of living on the king's land. They wouldn't even let you hunt the king's game on the king's land. Is any of this sounding familiar at all? Yeah, you know, the uh, one of the flags of the revolution was the pine tree flag, which was funny. You know, you couldn't cut down trees that were on the king's land. And uh, right now, if you cut down trees on so-called public property, you go to jail. Any live tree could be one inch in diameter. What was it, uh, Jefferson? I'm going to chop this up. He said that he predicted Americans would be happy if they could prevent the government from wasting the fruits of their labor and yeah. the guys of taking care of them. What are they doing? They take the fruits of our labor. The so-called American dream is to have a home own property, which it is. That's a fundamental right that we all can have to own property. And what do they do? They tax it. They tax it just because you own it, supposedly. But if you don't pay it, they take it from you. Right, Josh, but they provide so many services. Yeah, (laughs) they provide so many services. I've been up on moose hunting up the Steeps Highway. You know how many borough services I see up there? And they're all paying taxes. Uh, let me think. Uh, zero? Zero. Yeah. The state's up there. They're working. They're working on the roads through the holidays. And uh, go up to Salter River. There's, what, 900 people that have cabins up there? How many services do they get? They still get taxed. I had, I've heard people say, well, literally, people, the person told me this, well, they should pay it because they're privileged enough to have two places. They should pay more. How, how far off is that? They should pay more because they're privileged enough to have two. We should say, good job. Great. I'm glad you have two places. I wish you had three. And actually, more people could have two places or three, but they can't afford it because people, well, we know, they lose yeah. their homes yeah. because they don't pay their borough property tax. And if you if you lose your home because you're not paying, well, rent, basically, aren't you just a renter? Yeah. No? If you rent a home and you don't pay your rent, the landlord kicks you out. You own a home, supposedly, you don't pay your tax, the landlord kicks you out. It goes back to what we talked about last year with the serfs and the mm-hmm, lords. Exactly. That's all we are. We're basically serfs under this borough government. When Thomas Jefferson said, I predict future happiness for Americans if they can prevent the government from wasting their labors on the pretense of taking care of them. Right. Are you saying that's what the borough's doing? <laughs> I think he is take, saying that, Aaron. <laughs> we're trying to say they're taking care of us. I mean, and now I mean, we have... Uh, you need to move. <laughs> you do not this. deserve the privilege of living here, sir. No, it's it's absolutely take backwards. <laughs> they are privileged to exist. The borough government is privileged to have us here. My privilege of living here is my neighbors, my community. Um, my privilege... It is, is your neighbors who are voting to put your property up as lean to every time we bond, yeah. every single time we bond, it is your neighbors that are voting to put your property up as collateral for those loans. And people that don't even owe proper, own property or 
who don't even pay a property tax get to vote to exactly leave every time we vote property. to put a restriction on people's liberty on in terms of things like the the wood burn ban or whatever it is that they're talking about late now with the the wood stoves it's your your neighbors saying we don't like what you're doing on your property, and we're going to tell you you can't do it anymore. If we didn't have regulations, though, everybody would just start chopping each other to pieces with axes. <laughs> that's the thought. I mean, that's why we have malls, because we obviously can't take care of ourselves. I even have an there. axe for when this happens. <laughs> All right. 458-TALK is the number. Good morning, caller. This is Patriots Lament. Who's this? This is Randy. Good morning, Randy. Uh, good morning. Just to go back a little bit to Iraq and I and uh, Afghanistan. Uh, I think our troops are heroes and have done a lot of good in Afghanistan and in Iraq, and I hope that we don't pull out too soon to undo the good work that we've done, not that it's a guarantee that they won't slip slide back to where they were. You know, I guess that's always a possibility. I don't know yet if they're capable of self-government and all that stuff, but I hope they are. Hey, Randy, Randy, I got a question. I got a question for you. Yeah. Are we in America, if you looked at America today, could you say that we are capable of self-government? Yeah, we have proven that we are capable of self-government, though we are slip-sliding down the hole. So so with that in mind, right, with uh, the last 10 years in mind, the TSA, the, the police state, you know, all that, in America, by Americans, right, we've elected that. Um, what is the possibility that we could go into a foreign country with different customs, a different tradition, a different geography, different religions, and make a government that is better than the one we have here, which is, like you said, slip sliding away. What is the probability that people who are voting to do this to themselves could do something good to other people? There's a good possibility in certain countries like Japan, we succeeded from turning them into a dictatorship and they had a different religion, Shinto and everything, but yet they're much better off than they were under a under uh, uh, dictator, you know, and causing war for everybody else. But I wanted to make one point about kind of what on this issue. I one time, a person told me, they said, well, I have to ask myself, would I want to go over to Iraq? And the answer is no, they told me. So how can I expect anyone else to go over there? And, and I thought that was an interesting point and, and, and certain logic validity to it. But then the way I look at that, I myself have never been in the military, never served my country. And so I have to ask myself, well, would I want to go over there? And the way I handle that is I just accept that there are better men and women than, than I am. The American soldiers are heroes. They're, they're the best Americans that we got. And there may be jobs that I wouldn't want to do. Would I want to be an astronaut on the way to Mars? No. But do I think we ought to go to Mars? Yes. Why? People- Wait. Randy, hold yeah. on. Oh. Uh-huh. Randy, okay, Randy, you said oh, ahead, that Aaron. you said that Japan is better off now than it was because under a dictator, they were starting wars with everybody. Yeah. Well, didn't we just take their place? No, we defend You're right. People we don't from start tyranny. wars with anybody. We defend people from tyranny. That's oh. what we did. When we when we fought Hitler, we liberated all of Europe. When we fought Japan, we liberated we, we, it wait. to who? The <laughs> Russians? We yeah, let's talk about let's talk people. about the Eastern Bloc. Let's talk about the Eastern Bloc. Um, were they liberated? How many people died in the gulags after after World War II? Actually, most of them died before. Yeah, Russia but, was right. So, was so right, and so you have right. all these photos of FDR and Churchill and these guys shaking hands. Right, hooray! Hitler's gone. Terrific. Yeah. You know, Stalin we, was just worse. Just right, bad. right, exactly. exactly. So, so what are the other consequences? There's this is like economics. Economics is the art of understanding the unseen. Right, you see the direct consequence. Like if I point a gun at someone and pull the trigger, they die. Right, uh, like you know, you kill Saddam Hussein. Right, he's yeah. dead. Okay, that's the seen consequence. What's the unseen consequence? Right. What what is, you know, maybe Saddam Hussein was the only thing restraining the guy in Iran from being a, you know, a total whack job. There's all these other forces and we can't even we can't even run our own country, so to speak. Right. We can't even stay within our own constitution. And we're going over and pointing guns at people and writing constitutions to tell them how to live. And, and we're confused that it's not a success. Well, it's better than what they had. I mean, is it? Is it, Randy? Yes, Saddam is it? Hussein killed thousands of his own people. Why are there? Why are there? Why have? Gas. Why have more than half of the Christians left Iraq? Why? Why are they leaving Egypt? Right? The religious toleration there is is far worse than it was uh, before the war. Yeah, I think and, getting and, rid of Barack. Uh, I mean, uh, the guy in Egypt there. was bad. Maybe. No, that's what I'm saying. Since Mubarak has been taken out, 
uh, more than half the Christians in Egypt have left because the religious toleration that was that was present. Has gone under, away because, under a dictator. Yeah, there were some good things about Barack. I mean, the guy in Egypt. Yeah, I agree. But with Mubarak. You. Well, no, there there weren't. I mean, there weren't good things. There were less bad things. Right. So, right there you go. Right. It's right. A relative thing. But, yeah. but Randy, let me let me let me ask you one quick question here. You uh-huh. you you said that Japan was better off. How do you know that? Because in what Japan, what's, what standard had, do you use to measure that? When they in Japan, when they had the dictator, they had thought police. People could be arrested just for having bad thoughts. And then they went and m- m- murdered millions of people in China, c- took over Taiwan, took over the Philippines. Randy, can, can you be arrested in America for just having bad Baton thoughts? Baton Death Map March. That's what we got rid of when we turned Japan Randy, into a Randy, can you get Democratic arrested country. in America for having bad thoughts? Yeah, yes, we have anti-discrimination laws, which are a terrible tyranny, and we need to get rid of those. Laws. I'm, I'm not. I'm talking about guys like Michael Anderson. Well, I think the, the whole point is we're trying to. We're focusing back 60 years ago, this and that. But there's parallels. What we're trying to point Every out is... Every single thing you just said, Randy. It's happening right here. We need to come home and take care of home. We need to take care of what's going on here. We're fighting foreign wars, and our liberties are not being taken from, right now, these bad Muslims. They're being taken from, from us by our own government. By good Americans I, like you, Randy. I have one more question for Randy. Uh-huh. You said that um, we saved... Uh, the Iraqi people from Sudan who killed thousands of them, right? Yeah. Do you think that he killed more than have died in the 10 years that we've occupied that place? We killed bad people, but they were <laughs> killing each other by the thousands. The Shias and the, uh, and the Sunnis um, were bomb- bombing and killing marketplaces, and it was a terrible yeah. thing. So there's, an interview, there's an interview with uh, Madeleine Albright. Do you remember who that is, Randy? Yeah, the former Secretary of State. Under okay, Clinton. right. So there's an interview with her in, I think it was ni- 1999. And it was on 60 Minutes. And the interviewer asked her, she said, the U.N. says that between 500,000 and a million uh, children under the age of five have died in Iraq because of sanctions on medical supplies since the end of the first Gulf War. And the interviewer asked her, do you think that is a price worth paying to continue um, using sanctions as pressure against Saddam Hussein? And Madeleine Albright said, yes, we consider that to be worth it. That's because what they, what they did to try to mitigate that problem was, the, was the, uh, the U.N. Oil for Food Program, and it was Saddam Hussein who sabotaged that program, also a few right. corrupt officials so, in the United Nations yeah, sabotaged so, Anyway, getting back to keeping you know, medical supplies out of a country to punish the leader, it, it punished the people on the ground. Right, right? that's the what U- the U.N. Sanctions, for, oil the for sanctions, food program was, to get medicine to right. people that needed it. So the it. sanctions that the U.S. put in place killed... Or, or cause more people to die of preventable diseases. You Saddam know, they, did that to his people. We no, provided no, the oil no, for, the oil no, for medicine. No, sa- he food. didn't put a sanction on his own people. The, yes, he the, did. No, the United he used States. that food for mass, weapons of mass destruction. I'm, I'm not talking about food. I'm talking about medical supplies. Yeah, so Saddam so, Hussein sabotaged yeah. his own people. Yes. No, so he did not take medical supplies. You, you're totally missing that. Because Madeleine Albright, on the interview, if you yeah. want to watch it, it's on YouTube, she actually admitted that that the U.S. was preventing medical supplies from getting in, and that she was aware that children had, half a million to a million children had died as a result. Randy, really appreciate your call. We're going to move on so we can get some more people in here. 458-TALK is the number. Welcome to Patriots Lament. Who's this? Hello? Hey, who is this? It's Caleb. Hey, Caleb, what's on your mind today? Well, I called in, but Aaron already already tackled it. I just My comment was just going to be to Randy there that, you know, Saddam was such a bad person. He killed so many of his own people. We had to go in there and remove him. But how many people did we kill? And uh, obviously, you guys just had that discussion. So I just think it's funny. You know, he, he, he apparently some people just can't see outside of you know what the media tells them to think. You know, use their own head. We he could have this. Way more Iraqis than, than Saddam Hussein did. I guarantee it. It's just ridiculous. Let's yeah, have the same think. conversation Thanks, about the Filipino people. There you go. And you know what? It, it, it's not just that. It, look at every single nation around the world. Couldn't we use that same justification for going in there and overthrowing every government everywhere? Yes, but Steve, the Filipinos are bad people. 